This is how I'm going to lay out the walls for the powder coat oven. These are the tracks for the metal studs that you get at Home Depot, Lowe's. So I got 24 across the back and then these are a little shorter on the side. The door is going to be to give me a little more room because I realize with the elements on each side I'm starting to run a little tight on room here. So the oven door is going to be built to the outside to give me a little bit more depth this way. Here's one of the side walls. Uh, I did end up putting rivets on both sides because when I did the back walls all finished and I put some, I think it's 26 gauge galvanized steel that you get at Home Depot. It's about 12 bucks a sheet. Um, so I did put it on both sides there. I just kept the rivets really low and then I cut the sheet a little bit short so there wouldn't be an overlap. Um, I figure it's going to... It's gonna have enough in the corner with that sheet and it'll it'll be able to suck it in. It's only one on the top and the bottom. I didn't like the way when I was trying to line it up, the corners were a little wonky. So I did, this one's got it on both sides, ready to go. I'm gonna sheet the inside of this, um, screw it to there and then build the other one and do the same thing. And then I can start probably building the roof after that I got the walls built and bolted to the back wall so this is pretty much a good idea of the overall size of it um, I still got to figure out what I'm going to do with heating elements I initially wanted to do a heating element on each side I feel like I'm kind of starting to run out of room so I may or may not do the heating element just one of them on the back or possibly two of them on the back I don't know, I gotta think some things over, but for now I'm just gonna build the top and put that on and that way I could start planning out the wiring. Alright, so I'm working on getting the elements all situated. This is the original lower element. I decided I'm gonna use both elements, the lower one right here and then what was the broiler element on the back. I'll talk more about the wiring later. Um, I'm doing what a lot of other people are doing and using a an electrical box, a metal electrical box. This is an oversized one, four and a half inch or whatever it is. Um, I got lucky and the ends of the element, actually I just knocked out these two knockouts and I was able to put them right through the original knockout holes. Um, it's not screwed in yet. I skipped ahead a couple steps because I was doing other things and kind of working on the box while my lathe was going. Um, you can see for clearance I sorry about the echo for clearance I um, knocked out this back one and I also had to run it on the mill just to give me some space for that rivet you could see a couple holes in the bottom corner I decided to go with uh, through bolts instead of using any kind of set screws or self tapping screws because I didn't want to take any chance of this assembly loosening up from the back wall I had seen some people talking about the um, self tappers coming loose after a while so I might replace these with rivets eventually but for this part and for the the box that's going to be on the back wall I decided to go with quarter inch bolts so it'll just be a nut and bolt screwed right through. Um, I also have to still knock out this one knockout and uh, I'm not sure which side I'm going to do I'm going to run the wiring right through that way and then just hook the terminals right up the way they were uh, so yeah it, it just barely fit in I got it it's not screwed in yet but I'm gonna have like a quarter inch barely even a quarter inch on each side um, which will be it'll be enough I'm gonna have insulation in it so it's not gonna heat up the walls too too much I mean it will but what are you gonna do it's gonna be an oven it's gonna get hot inside after giving it a little more thought, I decided to make a base rather than having the oven use the frame or the stand as the base. Uh, I was a little worried about insulation. With the one and a half inch square tubing on the bottom and the steel plate that I was thinking about using, I wouldn't really be able to get a good amount of insulation underneath. It would then have to be kind of sealed off to work best. So I decided to just go the same way as I built the top and make a 24 inch by 24 inch 
um, skeleton just with a thing. I'm going to have to cut the insulation into like 12 inch pieces, but whatever. It's not a big deal. I didn't feel like doing it on 16s. Um, so this is going to be the base and then I'm going to screw the cabinet to this. Another reason was when I do the uh, door gasket, I kind of wanted to give, rather than having a screw into the eighth inch plate and one and a half inch steel, which is all kind of thick, I bought a door gasket that I'll show you guys later that would be a lot easier just to screw straight into this thinner stuff. Finally starting to look like something. I got the base onto the walls. Um, I just have to build the door still. I'm going to wait until I put it back on the table. First I'm going to insulate, sheet the sides, put it on the table, screw it together. Then I'm going to seal the corners. Um, I got, I'm not sure if this is exactly what I'm going to use. I've been kind of changing things up as I go. This is a fire block sealant. It's good for up to 1300. Uh, so one thing I did... I was a little worried about how a wheel would be supported just from the eye hook through the stud up there. So I went ahead and I, I took a piece of scrap, uh, I think this was like 3 quarter inch by 8 inch steel, and I just drilled a hole in it to give it a little bit more support. And it actually helps a lot. It doesn't allow the top to flex down when I pull on it. Uh, you could see I screwed the side walls to the top, but then I also, since I didn't run, it's hard to explain, the wall is this thick, I would only be screwing into there, so uh, it, it, since this metal's so thin, there would be like a little flop in that, that this gap right along here so I kind of put as many rivets and screws as possible to make sure that if there is any movement it doesn't eventually start cracking the silicone something like that I don't know uh yeah so get down without busting my ass alright here's where I'm at I got the two sides insulated there's insulation underneath both sides are done I'm just using uh, the not craft faced insulation. Apparently now it comes with a plastic covering on the outside, but if you peel this off, it's just regular insulation underneath. It's uh, whatever it is for two by four walls, R12, R13, I forget. Um, so I've got the two boxes run for the elements and then you can see I'm using uh, fittings for uh, EMT or conduit, half-inch conduit. It's coming through the back here. There'll be a little short piece of half-inch conduit. It's going to go to a box here, box there, conduit bridging the two. And then one thing I have to do right now is add uh, the thermocouple. is going to be up here somewhere. That's all in high-temperature wiring, so I'm just going to run that uh, out on the outside of the insulation and then with this box on the outside I'm gonna knock out one for the uh, EMT and then a, another knockout done for running the thermocouple in so then that can join the wiring for the rest there'll be a 90 up here and it'll go across to the top and to a control box up top so let me get insulating I can now seal off this top uh, the only thing I have to leave open is the back for a, a little bit longer till I get the thermocouple set up and figure out where the holes are going to be and then I could sheet the back too. So let me get sheeting on this and then I could build the door after that. You're not going to be able to see this once I sheet the back so I figured I'd just show you how I set this up. I have the um, little piece of half inch conduit in between two conduit ends, the threaded kind that screw into a box. So then I'll measure out on the back sheet where I put this hole and that hole and then I'll put it over top and then the box is going to mount over top there. Then I can run the wiring all through so that none of the wiring is going to be 
run internally in the back of the oven at all. It's going to be run through and then into the box, up to this box, and then up and over the top to the controller. One thing I forgot to mention before, um, I joined a Facebook group called DIY Powder Coating Oven Builds, and a lot of people were saying that they don't recommend using the self-tappers that are like this with the pointy drill kind of and they said that these loosen up after a while from the, the heat and the expansion and the contraction I guess so what I've been doing I, I use some on the inside but from from this point on I've been doing um, regular pan head Phillips screws and I've just been pre-drilling like a little bit smaller than an eighth inch hole and then driving them in by hand because with an impact driver you can go too far pretty easily so I just drive them in until they're tight and then they're good to go. I just wanted to show you my method for bending this top panel since I don't have a sheet metal brake that's wide enough. I have a press brake but it's not a full 24 inches wide. I need to bend it down the sides for since I, I made the the bottom it ended up making the whole thing overall a little longer so I have this gap so this piece is going to come down the sides so I just took a piece of scrap aluminum that I had it's probably about 3 8 inch aluminum clamped it down made my marks clamped it down and then I bent it by hand and then went along and hit it with the mallet and it gave it a nice sharp edge the whole length so now I'll take this piece throw it on top scribe a line along the bottom and do the same thing for the other side quick view of the back side before I button this all up you could see the thermocoupler wire and the two pieces of conduit for where the heating elements are going to come through I just wanted to show you guys the door before I go sealing it all up and show you the way I skin the one side of it um, since it's the door you got sides that are exposed and I didn't like the way that there are these openings for in the studs that's where you run wires through and stuff like that uh, I've seen people just tape over it with some some of the uh, foil tape but I went ahead and got since this the sheets I'm using are two foot by three foot and this is a two foot by three foot door there's no room to go over the side so I took a piece and I cut it uh, into 29 inches goes two and a half 24 two and a half and I needed to use two pieces because this is two feet wide right here and then I just got another piece and cut off a little bit of it did the same method for bending it I put it along the edge of the table I clamped it down with a piece of aluminum and I got a nice really crisp bend on the edge of it and now it fits over top overlaps the sides so that way it's all sealed up you could see on this side I already started putting the tape down I put the tape first before I put the screws and then I started putting some screws in the door seal is all installed um, I was gonna use the one that I took off the oven that I got for parts but it wasn't long enough and I would have had to order more anyway so I just got this stuff it came from McMaster car it's a fiberglass coated it's the same style as what was on the oven that I took parts from it's a little different because it's not the other one was a silver like shinier smoother fiberglass on the outside this one's like a little kind of fuzzy but it'll do good it's made for this kind of stuff it might be a little thicker than what I need but it does compress so now I'm going to set the door in place and clamp it to the tightness I want to have it so that it's sealed all the way around and set the hinges and set the latches. Here's what I did for the hinge. Uh, I used two large clamps to keep the door in place and compress the seal a little bit and then I used the piano hinge that I got from Home Depot. So I got enough screws in it now. I'm going to test the way it opens oh, and I used a piece of wood to keep from totally caving in the front of it. Um, I'm going to test the way it opens and then put these onto the other side and compress the other side and then put the latches on the other side. Alright, finally got the oven cabinet done. I got three latches on the side. 
Uh, the only thing I want to do is maybe eventually add some reinforcement to where these latches, maybe a strip of one inch aluminum down the side because this is a little thin and it, it pulls back and kind of misshapes the uh, side edge of the door a little bit and I could see that maybe eventually ripping out so I'll probably get to that before it becomes a problem but the seals on it closes nicely um, you can see it Compresses the seal a good amount here the bottom one you can Actually see it pull back and I still left this is almost as loose as it goes I left myself some room to tighten it up. So when I Do reinforce everything I can even pull these a little tighter and uh, get a little more Closing pressure although I don't see any gap, so I don't think it's going to be a problem so now this is Finally at the point where I can wire it uh, not gonna lie this took a lot of work just if you're gonna build an oven you might as well build it as big as possible I kind of wish I could have built it a little bigger I don't really have the room to build it bigger although I could have probably built it taller and not wider it wouldn't have been too much more money and effort but it's it's a good amount of work to build this thing so um, I'm going to get started on the wiring next. I'll put the elements in, get them where they're going to go, and then do the. I got to cut some things in the control box, make the control box that's going to mount to the side right here, and next thing is going to be that. 